welcome to lima's kitchen today i'll be showing you how to make nice fluffy puff puff this recipe doesn't require you to get your hands messy so stay tuned to see how to make it firstly i'm going to activate the yeast by mixing it with sugar and lukewarm water using hot water would denature the yeast and your butter would not rise so use lukewarm water guys you can skip this activation step and just add the yeast directly to the flour if you're using instant yeast. So I'm just stirring the mixture until the yeast is well dissolved and we can set it aside while we mix the remaining ingredients. Now I'm going to add some flour to my mixing bowl, then some nutmeg. Nutmeg literally takes puff puffs to another level, trust me guys. But if you don't have some, not to worry. So I'm just mixing to ensure that the nutmeg is incorporated into the flour. And then I'm going to add in the yeast mixture. I like to use a whisk instead of a spoon to mix because it allows the butter to become smooth faster. You can use a spoon if you don't have a whisk though. So just keep mixing until you get a nice smooth batter. This is the type of consistency you want. You don't want the batter to be too thick or too runny. And I like to say that this is the perfect time to preheat your oven for about two minutes and then you turn it off because you're not going to put your puff puff mixture in an oven that is hot. Don't make that mistake guys or else your batter is going to be cooked in the oven. You need heat for the batter to rise so cover the batter with some foil paper or cling film. If you're using foil paper, the shiny side should be facing you not the dull side because it's the dull side that conducts the heat. Use a tea towel to cover that up for extra warmth, then place the bowl in the warm oven to rise for about 45 minutes to 1 hour. It's been about 1 hour now and I'm going to take off the tea towel and fold to have a look at what's going on with my batter. Ideally, the batter should have doubled in size. This is how my batter looks after it's risen. You can see how bouncy it looks. Mix the batter now and what you get is a stretchy consistency. This allows you to easily mold the puff puff using a small ice cream scoop or a measuring spoon, ideally one tablespoon. So I'm just waiting for the oil to heat up but I don't want it too hot. Dip the ice cream scoop or measuring spoon in oil first, then use it to mold the batter into a bowl and drop it in the hot oil. I'm using this molding method because I honestly can't stress myself. It's so annoying when you're trying to form the perfect round puff puff, but then your hands are just not working right that day. So in order to prevent hassle in the kitchen, I just take my ice cream scoop and all my balls are the same size. So with this method, literally anybody can use it and they will get good results. Trust me guys, you need to try this. Puff puff can be shallow fried. It needs to be deep fried with a lot of cooking oil over medium heat. So make sure you set your cooker to medium heat so that the oil doesn't get too hot. And then you find out that your puff puff is getting burnt on the outside. But then when you open it up, it's not cooked inside at all. Can you guys see how perfect the balls look? Honestly, I can't wait to eat these. They look so yummy. I'm using a stainless steel schema to flip the puff puff to ensure all sides are fried evenly. I'm going to keep doing this till they are all golden brown. Then I'll take them out and place them in a sieve lined with kitchen towel. The puff puff is pretty much ready now. Time to eat this delicious snack. 
thanks for cooking with me please like comment and subscribe if you haven't already see you guys in my next video bye